Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time you're watching this at here. Uh, this is Ian. Um, welcome to Math 1031, Week 2. Um, apologies there that I won't be able to uh, uh, hold a live class there, but this um, this PowerPoint is pretty uh, it's pretty cake. We sh shouldn't even be here an hour, so uh, that's why we'll uh, let you guys sleep in there if need be. Uh, the uh, But here it is. Let's get it going. Um, but I should tell you that <clears throat> the questions and answers are posted as well into the weekly folder. Uh, please have a look at those. And also, uh, your assignment uh, one is ready to go. And I'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit because that's just the way this one is. You'll see here that everything that's highlighted in yellow is a question. And just I just just don't want anyone there to not get a question here but I'm still working on the answer sheet on how to uh, um, but this is what it'll look like here and see everywhere that's highlighted a ye as yellow will be a corresponding question don't worry we'll uh, cover in all this there today graphs and there's even uh, pie charts we'll cover that there today and uh, these are called stem and leaf which we'll get in there there uh, everything is all right so um, that is your assignment. It'll be posted there. It'll be ready to go. And uh, But here is week two. Let's go. Organizing and presenting qualitative data. Uh, there are three main ways to organize and present qualitative data. You've got tally charts, which are kind of closely aligned there to a frequency distribution table. They're pretty easy. We'll, I'll show you those. Bar chart, I just showed you guys, and pie chart. Okay. You guys are going to be able to construct these, and uh, they're not too bad at all. So, just to be clear, this is what we call a table. And to be ultra clear, this is what we call a chart. So, any type of a graph, we'll call a chart there. And this is a table. It's got rows and columns, right? So, uh, this has rows and columns too, but... This is our table here, and you'll see how we utilize both of them differently there, okay? Um, so a tally chart. Basically, you count up how many you have, and you put little sticks. You draw four lines, and then a line through it. That represents five. So, let's have a look here. So the data here is represented using uh, tally marks organized into multiples of five. So let's see how we uh, utilize this right here. And you see from once we get all of our numbers there from our tally, you know, um, well, you know, here we're talking about subjects, right? What's your favorite subject? Whatever. It could be what's your favorite ice cream. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to give you a group of data and it's going to look like mashed potatoes. And you're going to organize it. Okay. So here I had 12 uh, people that thought that English was their favorite subject and you see here we actually write in the numbers over here now we have what's called a frequency distribution and you can now tell you know what I mean it's like what I said there last week taking the unorganized mashed potatoes and organizing it into something visual Harley so here's your mashed potatoes Completely unorganized data. Let's have a read. A class of students enrolled in a statistics for health science class are surveyed about their field of interest. Nursing, pharmacology, athletic, uh, uh, sorry, athletic therapy or kinesiology. We got uh, veterinary, paramedic and other. So you've got all these different categories here that are, you know, not really related to each other. But, um, and these are the number of students there that, so these are our numbers here, completely unorganized. So what do we do? Well, you draw three columns there to represent field of interest, a tally, and frequency. So let's have a look here. What do we got? So you take all the information there that I gave you, okay? And then now you got to go through physically, you know, with a pen, paper, or however, and start scratching off and adding up. So, I've gone through the entire set of data here, and these are all the data points there relating to, and you see we've stratified them, put them into different uh, 
uh, fields of interest. And now we just count them up. So here, I've got five and two, that should be a seven. Here I've got four, that should be a four. Here I've got five, five and two, so this one here should be 12. And here I've got five and four, which is nine, and then five and then three. Let's see. Woo. The modern miracles of science and technology, eh? So you see there, that's what we've done. Pretty crazy stuff, eh? Yeah. So now that you've organized this data into some type of meaningful, in some meaningful way, now you can actually start to pursue scientific knowledge and start asking and answering questions. So what is the most common field of interest? Well, what's your biggest number? Nursing, 12, so that's the most common. What is the least common? Well, you go to the least there, number three, which is other, whatever that is, okay? So now we can do meaningful data. Um, we can create meaningful data here and maybe change the world. So what do we got here? How many students were surveyed in total? Well, that's your total, right? So you add them all up, 40 students, all right? There's something else here there that we need to uh, look at. It's a new term. It's really not that bad. Uh, it's called your relative frequency. So you got your tally, which is just the number there that uh, you counted. And then you change that into a real number, which is your frequency. You have your total students, right? Because you counted them. So your relative frequency is 7 divided by 40. Because for this one here, we're talking about athletic therapy or kinesiology, okay? And we've got seven students out of 40, so what's my percentage? Okay, so um, practice this one. If you're not that good about changing fractions into decimals or percentage, these kinds of things, um, the seven divided by 40 is equal to 0 0.175. So 0 0.175. And you can change any decimal into a percentage by multiplying the decimal by 100%. So you see right here, you take your, uh, for this one right here, 7 divided by 40, 0.175 times by 100. So therefore, that 7 students in this particular survey represent 17.5% of all students. And if you do the same thing here, 4 divided by 40 is 4 divided by 40 is equal to point, 0 0.1. So multiply that by 100 equals 10%. Practice these out because I will hit you on these again for sure. Okay? And if you have any issues with that, just let me know. But that is your cumulative frequency. Um, in next week's uh, class, which is on the assignment here, uh, we will deal with something called cumulative frequency. So I'll post uh, week three there early and y'all can uh, have a look at um, cumulative frequency. But again, it's not too bad. None of this stuff is really too bad. All right. Pie charts. Okay, first of all, a circle has 360 degrees. That's what we need to know there for this one. Sometimes it helps there to have a protractor. But if uh, you won't need one there uh, for this course here, I don't think. Nah, I don't think so. Um, pie charts are used to summarize and Harley, relax. Pie charts are used to summarize and show classes uh, or groups of data in uh, proportion. So you see, here we've got um, I don't know five different. Uh, ideas being represented here. And the nice thing about a pie chart is that 100% of the data has to be here because that's what a circle is. And so now you can compare sizes of these groups in conjunction with another group of participants in the same study. And uh, you can visually see here, these are great by showing you that this one, that B and A make up more than half 
of all data points here, probably around 60%, all right? And like here, we've got 30, 45. So 45% is here, 55% is here. And that's the great thing about uh, these pie charts here. So the final grades of 40 students who passed a math exam are represented in the pie chart, okay? Good, let's go on and see how we uh, make one of these. Okay, so these guys here, uh, pie charts are great for uh, summarizing, okay, and comparing. Uh, the size of each sector represents the percent portion or fraction of each category of the data. Okay, if you look here, we have two portions uh, of the uh, pie. Here we've got this sector, which is 15% uh, and 54 degrees. And if you take your calculator and divide 54 degrees by 360 degrees, you should get 0.15. And if you multiply that by 100, you'll get 15%. So you just have a look here. Um, if you want to measure degrees, so a circle is 360 degrees. Okay, so let's say we start here. We're at zero degrees. If we go all the way up here, so now you basically have one quarter of the circle. Okay, that's 25%. That's 90 degrees. 90 divided by 360 is one quarter, which is 25%. Okay. Um, if we wanted an angle that went all the way around here to here, so a straight line has an angle of 180 degrees because 180 is half of a circle, and that would be half of this circle, okay? If we went, had an angle that went all the way around and stopped here, so now we're at basically three quarters of the circle, and that's 270 degrees. 270 divided by 360 gives you 0.75. Multiply by 100 gives you 75%. And we can go all the way around, okay? And that's 100% of the data and that's 360 degrees. If you have any issues with this, just let me know and we'll set up, uh, we'll set up a WebEx. All right, um, so the following data represents the monthly expenses for senior citizen living on fixed income in an assisted living facility. So here, housing, 2,000 bucks, meals, 1,200, healthcare, 800, taxes, 500, transportation, three, miscellaneous, 200. So this person here spends about five grand a month, okay, just on living. So based on this table, draw a pie chart and label the percent and sector angle for each sector. So how do we do this here? So... Same as, same as uh, this one right here. Keep this one here, but basically we're just adding on an extra column. Okay? And we need to find the percentage of each of these of the total. Because we have the total, which is five grand, but I need percentages, right? Because the percentages are going to tell me how big the slices of each pie are. So, you take 2,000 divided by your total, multiply by a hun. So this one right here represents 40%. 1,200 divided by 5,000 times 100 gives you 24%. And you see all of these guys here, they add up to 5,000. Well, all of your percentages better add up to 100 or pretty close to it. Okay? That's how you know you're on the right track. Okay? So now we've got our percentages for all of these different expenses. Now, you multiply these percentages by 360 degrees, and that'll give you how much of an angle you're going to make for uh, these pie graphs. And normally, I would get you guys to do this and all that, but the uh, I'll still get you guys to do this, but as far as drawing a, a pie graph goes, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So... Yeah, we're almost done. That's uh, just based on these percentages. See, 40%. If you're going to calculate this, you got to change that 40% back into a decimal. And that would be 0.4. 24% as a decimal would be 0 0.24, 0 0.16, 0 0.1, 0 0.06, 0 0.04. 
If you multiply 0 0.04 times 360, you'll get 14.4. Okay? So there's your all your angles that you would need. And then you would end up drawing this, and this would give you uh, all of your breakdown of what's happening here. And then you can see it's so much easier to visually see. You know, this doesn't really tell us too much, but this right here tells us all the information. Okay? And that's what we're looking for. And from here, you can extrapolate all the information. What is the biggest expense for a senior citizen living on a fixed income in an assisted living uh, facility? According to the largest slice of the pie, housing for sure. What is the smallest expense? Okay. And you see, you just break this down and have a look at it. Okay. Bar charts. A bar chart is a graph that uses vertical or horizontal bars to show comparison among other categories or uh, class intervals of grouped data. Okay. So please notice here on the y-axis and the x-axis. The distribution of data in these categories or the frequencies associated with the class intervals is plotted on the y-axis. So here we have the number of students, right? Kind of makes sense. Put your increasing numbers on the left-hand side and put your categories there on the bottom on the x-axis. So these are the different categories, whether they're related or unrelated. You know what I mean? They're not touching here. And that's what we like to have there, okay? Um... And again, the categories or class intervals should be set up uh, without any overlap. So there, there's spaces in between these bar graphs, right? Okay. And the width of the base of the rectangle for each category or class interval should be equal. So you see there that they're all equal along the bottom. It doesn't matter how many is in here, but they all get the same weighting on the bottom. Okay. Um, the height or length of the bars should uh, show the quantity of the data or the frequency, right? It's like the number. So if there's eight people in this group, there's 10 people in this group, everything should be measured all the way up to the 8 and 10 and 12 and 14 on the side here. So 10 students achieved a grade A. All right, so that's, that's what it means. Uh, a bar chart is also used uh, to represent two or more sets of data having the same class interval side by side. So you see here, this is a classic. We've all seen this there before. Here, I'll zoom in. Uh, so what do we got here? We've got a bar chart there for the number of males and females treated at a physiotherapy and wellness clinic from January to June. Blah, blah, blah. All right. So it appears there my red is male. And greenish blue there is female. And what a great chart. So here, even though we're dealing with men and uh, male and female, we can make a comparative analysis there even on a monthly basis. <coughs> okay. So you see here that 60 males attended the clinic there in Jan, while 70 females attended the clinic there, okay, for the same time period. And you see we can comparatively uh, analyze things there, even... Uh, this is on a six-month basis, but look, we can compare males and females there on a monthly basis. So, that one works. The following bar chart shows the number of males and females. Okay, so this is the same one right here. How many males and how many females were treated in total at the clinic over the course of six months? Honestly, there's a hundred million questions you could ask from this. How many males were treated uh, for the first three months? How many females were treated there for the last three months? Anything I can ask for there from you guys, and uh, you guys can fish out the information there from there. Okay. Uh, in which months were more females treated at the clinic than males? Well, you see. And like here, as we said there before, 70 females were treated in Jan. 60 males were treated in January. And how many more? So the answer here would be 10. Okay, and you know, have a look at these. There is differences, and that's the whole point. Okay, have keep looking at these there. Not too bad. Uh, there's a Pareto chart, which is just another word for a bar chart. Uh, exactly the same thing here, but it's a little different in how you organize the data. So in a Pareto uh, chart, the categories are arranged along the horizontal axis by frequency. 
And you see, the thing with a Pareto chart is that there's no obvious way to arrange the categories. And we'll show you what we mean here. Like, uh, um, if we take, uh, let's have a look here. You, you have a look at, uh, we've seen all these there before and the numbers are exactly the same. These are the uh, number of students in a pre-health science program and where they want to go, right? Our most popular uh, people are going into nursing and uh, the other one there was athletics, uh, therapy and kinesiology. Pharmacy is at nine. So these, these subjects are completely unrelated. Veterinary is no better than nursing. Vet tech is no better than pharmacology. There's no, you know what I mean? I'm not ranking them on any. So you'll see there, there's, there's no way to rank these. And I, you know what I mean? It's impossible because you're comparing apples and oranges. The only way we can organize these is from highest to lowest. So in a situation where all of your fields of interest are completely unrelated, there's no way to organize them other than high to low so that we can get a comparative analysis here. Oh, what was my number one? Oh, nursing. What was number two? Pharmacology. What was number, what was number, oh, the last one there was other. So that's how we do it. A bar chart that's organized from highest to lowest is a Pareto chart. That's it. And uh, here's some more review questions in there. Y'all can have a look at these. But that's all there is there for this week, okay? Um, so the questions, the answers are all listed in the review. And they're all in the week two folder. Uh, your assignment will open there. To, uh, uh, I'm recording this today, Tuesday. But your assignment will be open there Wednesday. Everything will be ready to go. And uh, other than that, uh, if there's any issues, take it easy and just email me. We'll sort it all out. But other than that, just enjoy the nice weather, and I uh, hope you guys are doing very well. Um, quiz uh, one will open up there next week, and then we have our test there the week after. And But you can see we're not doing anything there too crazy. So I uh, hope you guys are well, and any questions, email me. Other than that, get out of here and enjoy the nice weather. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.